Never in doubt? <laughs> yeah, never in doubt. Um, they keep doing it, don't they, these boys? They find a way to give me a heart attack when we get close like that. But actually, we think we're OK at winning close games, which is a good thing. There's a positive. A big win for the club, given the Brownies farewell and, and just the the way the boys sort of withstood that late North charge as well? Yeah, I guess all the romantics out there will be very pleased that, you know, that the fairy tale's complete and Brownie got sent off in the right way and, you know, it was, it was a very good night for the club. Do you take the positives of the second quarter or do you look at ways you can improve because you were so close to getting the right over? Yeah, that, I mean, the crowd jeered when we actually scored our first rush behind. I think that was about the 25-minute mark, so... A lot turns around in a game of footy, so it says a lot for our resilience that we actually do have it within the group. Um, we just have to activate it more often. What does that, that second quarter show? I guess we've seen glimpses of that in a couple of matches this year. Uh, well, I thought we started to control the match, uh, particularly with the, with the ball uh, offensively, and that, that's one of the rare times we've done that. We've, um, you know, having composure in our offence has been a challenge. You know, I mean, there's always challenges when you've got a young team and, you know, and, and you're sort of finding your way up the ladder. But, um, yeah, that was one that I was, I was pleased with. They were able to control the ball a little bit better, had some composure with the ball. That was, that was handy. Pierce Hamley's best game of the year. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, he did. He just he ran really well. He, um, you could see he was one of the mids that was getting out of the congestion. So um, it, it, you could see it visibly that he was the one that was, you know, had the ability to break the lines. It looked like he really had his speed uh, and his, well, certain, he's always had his endurance, but um, confidence in his legs to really mm. run hard tonight, both in terms of the power and speed. Well, he's always had his speed. Um, it's always been yeah, there. It's just... <laughs> oh, I see. Um, no, no. Well, look, he did. He has had some interrupted year, and sometimes when you're, you know, not confident in your body week to week, he will have, in, you know, an inconsistent year. And he probably has had that in self-reflection for himself. He, he'd say he's had an inconsistent year. So, um, and yeah, and part of that is having confidence in your body. Part of that's having confidence in your game plan and what you're doing as well. So he's, he, you know, last week was a poor game for. Pierce this week was a, a very good game, so it's just a matter of making those lower games a bit higher, and, that, and that's a message for the whole group, not just Pierce. It's is that we have to make sure our, you know, when the teams do challenges and we are a bit behind, we um, we rally, and we did. They're not only sort of half in jest about the Romantics, you know, getting their wish tonight, and whatever, but. You've travelled back from Perth, your team's struggling. How are you able to find the rest yeah. of that? Oh, oh, I actually didn't realise that until it was mentioned after the game to me, to be honest. We never even focused on it, I never thought about it. Because um, we travel every second week, you, you don't tend to you know, worry about the travel back from Perth. But um, it is a tough flight back you know, when you're catching the red eye. But so, you know, when you, when you look at it like that, the ability to grind it out was probably even more you know, rewarding for us. Think of, uh, Daniel debut. Yeah, it was good until the last 30 seconds of the game. <laughs> uh, no, no debuts are perfect. Um, the bloke who retired this week, he had zero possessions in his first game, so he beat him comfortably. One free kick four, I think, for him. Uh, yeah, that's it. And it was yeah. an advantage. <laughs> Sorry, did you see what happened? You stop interrupting, you stop interrupting each other, you two <laughs> players, just get it right. Um, what happened, did you speak to Rocky, what happened after the game between him and Boomer? And uh, no, I heard, I heard secondhand there's some stuff going on um, after the game. I mean, there's nothing, I don't know the ins and outs of it. I guess, like all these things, one team says one thing, one team says the other. So, um, all I know in this game is that, you know, if you put something out there, it, re it reflects you and it resembles you. So, um, you know, if Rocky's done something wrong, well... He's got to man up um, and own that. If he didn't, if it was sportsmanlike and it was just a part of the game, well, that's what it was as well. Because I know Boomer really well too, and Boomer loves a chat on the field. So um, but that's what you just have to make sure that make sure you're not crossing the line when, you know, because they're both competitive beasts. So, um, so it's only to learn a lesson from it or he won't, depending on what the scenario was. And as I said, I don't really, I'm not really versed at exactly what happens. So I can't stand in judgment for either guy really. What do you think of your forward line without Brownie? Um, Thank God he's gone. <laughs> we finally got someone functioning down there. It was really good that Closey came up and filled the void, had his best game, and you know even possession-wise, and looked like he was clunking the ball. Daniel Merritt, we played as a full-time forward and, and had more energy because, unfortunately, when you're playing that second ruck role, you, you're spending a lot of time burning up in the ruck. Then you put your back full forward and you know it, burning up his energy. So um, I think he looked better more as a permanent forward, Daniel, tonight. I'm sorry to take the focus away from the win for just a moment, but uh, I might be reading too much into this, but uh, Brown, as he was walking around the 
ground at half time in this huge British place. I thought he looks, just looks like a man who's been set free. I don't know if you've had much of a chat to him after you know the retirement on Monday, but uh, does he does it seem like a weight's lifted for him, perhaps? Well, maybe. I mean, a sense of I think there is a sense of relief when you retire. To be perfectly honest, the war's over. You know, you can go home and just settle and you don't have to fight the battle anymore. So there, there is that. I think um, I can only reflect on my own retirement, but the first 12 months is difficult. The first three months is easy because you, you go into sort of that relief mode and then after that it's finding the new life again. What am I? Am I a media man? Am I a part-time football coach? Am I? A, they're the challenges that will come along the way. But initially I think it's a sense of relief and just enjoying the moment and I, I feel that's what he's doing. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, bye -bye.